Good day, good people. It's Gail here today um, on the Uber network, not Ubering. Trying to figure out why all this stuff keeps going on in my home. Um, I'm not Ubering today because I woke up this morning and my body pretty much said, you can sleep or die. And um, I chose sleep. <laughs> so I decided to sleep a little extra. Um, so since I'm not going to go out, I decided I was going to, I posted a thing about how the Prius works, and I also wanted to answer the ongoing question of, why did you become an Uber driver? Most people become Uber drivers for various reasons. Um, the Uber drivers I talk to, of course, every time I take an Uber, I ask the same question, why did you decide to drive Uber? And the number one question, the number one answer is, I just needed something to do. The majority of Uber drivers I've encountered are retired. So if you're retired, that's, you know, a thing to do. Um, I fell into Uber by being inspired by an Uber driver that took me to my, um, the airport when I was going to Italy a couple of months ago. If you have seen any of my past broadcasts, you know that I was in Italy um, last month. And just hearing him talk about it and then piecing together other stories and even my hairdresser had told me hey you know you'd be really good at uber because you kind of have that personality and so far uber is a lot of fun what set it all in motion for me to drive uber is last year in march i had an auto accident sitting at a red light boom from behind and really didn't think i was injured that badly Unfortunately, there were some circumstances um, that turned into uh, nerve damage. I still have issues with my jaw. Uh, I still have issues with my, my neck and my back. And this morning when I got up, my neck kind of just seized up on me. And I have, I have muscle relaxers and I also have a fantastic physical therapist who taught me some techniques for when that happens and how to... Um, without medication, bring the, the swelling and inflammation because apparently the majority of what that is is swelling and inflammation from overdoing it, overtasking, and sitting in a car for hours out of a day, you wouldn't think would really affect you that much, but it does. And me driving Uber is also me testing the limits of myself after the accident because I, I'm not, I, I'm not debilitated. I can move, I can work, but until I am in a situation, I don't know the extent of it or what's going to happen. So me and Uber also is my own personal little litmus test to see if I can indeed endure long periods of travel. My previous job as coordinator at a community college, I traveled quite a bit. I went to conferences. I think I went to five conferences in 2017. I was also that person setting up tables for vendor events, uh, the exhibits. I was out networking. I was uh, doing a lot of internal and external communications. So to go back into the realm of that, I everything for me at this point is a test because the past year, I, for the months after my accident, I pretty much just sat on the sofa. I was on the sofa. Um, the pain was excruciating and it was very foreign. Um, I didn't know what to do. I did take the prescribed medication that the doctors were giving me for a very short period because I didn't like the way it made me feel. It felt even worse. So I decided to do a cleanse which was specific to inflammation, what, almost 60 pounds gone after doing that. And I feel great until I test my limits. And today, um, the past month has been me testing my limits. And <clears throat> now I've hit my breaking point. And I realize I can't, I can't go like that um, for that amount of time driving a car and dropping people off and foolishly on occasion helping people with their luggage, which I know I should not be doing. I should not be doing that. Um, so this is me slowing down, not Ubering, but I started Uber basically because 
I've been in the house for a year. I have been applying for jobs. I have had the, quite a few interviews. Um, everyone seems to go in a different direction, and that's fine. Eventually, the direction I'm supposed to go in will manifest and open up, and I'll be in whatever that is I'm supposed to be in. Um, if you know Oprah, go ahead and call her. I know she needs just yet another host for something. I know she does. Go ahead, give her a call. I know you know her. But in the meantime, um, if you have a desire to do Uber, each person who does it, it's, you know, like with everything in life, your situation is going to be a lot different than mine. I was talking to a friend last night who said, girl, I applaud you. I wouldn't be able to do it. People would be getting dropped off on the side of the road. I wouldn't be able to do it. And honestly, you don't know what you can do until you do it. This specific person I know would be dropping people off on the side of the road, freaking out and uh, having a cigarette because she would. She would. And I know my brother Tyrone would be cussing folks out and dropping them off. Dropping them off on the side of the road. And there's only been like maybe one person I wanted to leave on the high five. But again, I'm not psychic. If you know I'm not going in the right direction, get me turned around to the right direction, okay? That is why I'm driving Uber. Um, today, I'm going to take a break. If you did not know, and you should by now, um, I have been writing, writing about this entire situation because here's, here's the deal with my current situation at, in respect to not having the traditional job, that, that good job people say we should have. And mine would have classified as a good job, it, good salary. Um, I, I enjoyed what I did. I really did enjoy it. Um, but the reality of it is I've been here before. This situation has happened in my life before. Not the exact same way, but the feeling around what is going on uh, when you lose something. Okay, let me talk from my perspective. In losing things, I always step back to see, first of all, did I actually lose it or did I misplace it? Once I determine it's lost, I have to understand, do I want it back? Then I have to ask, do I need it back? I need to get my ego out of the way because a lot of things I want back, I don't need. And we sometimes get into that situation where we want to cling to things that have left. So... The last time this happened, I moved to Texas in 1998 and was downsized in 2002. And I fought so hard to get back into that organization that I lost perspective of the fact that it probably went away because it was supposed to. And I missed out on other opportunities that I probably could have gotten. Three years later, after that situation, I went from 2002 to 2005 without a traditional job. I just dove into volunteering and giving my time to people and making sure I was um, giving back and being altruistic and being grateful and gracious. And then I hit a wall and was like, oh my God, nothing I'm doing is working I'm going to lose everything to include my mind. How do I get out of this? And I'm screaming and I'm yelling and I'm flailing. And then I packed up my home and got on with my life. And I was pretty much off track for 10 years. In respect to that time and how it factors in now, once I let go, once I was pretty much released from that job, because when I had the accident, I was sitting at a stoplight, very disillusioned with the direction they were going in, what they were doing, um, how the organization had changed. And I was sitting at the light, waiting for it to change. And in that moment of me thinking to myself, God, I just don't want to go back there. Boom. <laughs> God answers all prayers. <laughs> And at that very short moment in time of me saying that, it set all of that in motion. And that is what got me 
to drive an Uber. And I very much holistically believe that I am supposed to be driving Uber. And hopefully whatever this is about at this season in my life, it's working and it's moving me toward the true desires of my heart. And I am genuinely grateful for every aspect of everything that is going on right now. I would like to lie and say I'm not afraid, but when you have people calling you daily to say, hey, we're coming to get your stuff, that's unnerving. And when you're single and by yourself the majority of the time, it can take you to a really dark place. And that's where I don't want to go, which is why I needed an outlet to be around people. I've got relatives in the area. I got family, but I'm not going to disrupt anyone's life knowing that people have children and jobs and, and spouses and places to go and get to. I'm not going to disrupt someone else's life because mine has been disrupted. How wonderful this medium called Uber allows me the opportunity to still interact with people, still offer resources and information to them that they never thought about that plays into the realm of the communications job that I had and still want and desire. Okay, I don't necessarily want a job. I do want a career, always have and have always pursued that. And it doesn't always work out the way I want so maybe Uber is the platform, but today my body says rest and I've got to listen to it. Um, I have been successful with Uber in being able to make certain that I have lights and running water. And if you desire to pick up a copy of The Accidental Blessing, which is on Amazon, you'll know that that hasn't been consistent throughout the year. There have been some hiccups. There have been some major hiccups, but I'm tired of talking about it. I know too many people to have to keep reliving the agony of this year over and over again. If you have Amazon Prime, you could probably download it for five cents. Um, or you can get an Uber and get a copy and <laughs> give me a review because I'm I'm, I have entered the majority of what I write about in contests and I have queried many literary agents and have attempted to get someone to look at the work and I get rave reviews, but no one is willing to take it to the next level. And until I get concrete multiple reviews, it, it all might be crap. Everything I've written over the years might be complete and utter crap. But this season of my life has been illuminating and I am hoping and trusting and believing that if you are at a point of just throwing in the towel and giving up, don't do it. Do not do it. The last time I went through this, I gave up, I threw the towel in and I ran and I ran for 10 years. And the same situation has come back around and I'm standing firm on my faith, believing and understanding and knowing that God's got it, got me, and this is all going to be okay. So with that said, have a great day. And uh, if you're looking at this shade <laughs> and, and Shirley, uh, Shirley R, Shirley uh, Avo, you haven't seen this outfit yet, but you see that I have also repurposed the dress again for something else. And if you weren't in Italy, you you won't get that. But we were in Italy together, so they'll get it. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. Um, it looks like it might start raining, so I'm just going to chill, have a cup of coffee, some tea. I'm not really into TV, but I have to get some more writing out because... Within this year of my downtime, I managed to literally write four novels and three screenplays. Surely, there's a reason behind it all. All right. Have a great day, everyone. I'll catch you in the Uber.